We've reached the end of another week. Where's that gone? That's, it's just mad how they seem to fly by those weeks, don't they? The, uh, the end of the month is well, it's, it's also upon us as well, heading into October. Nice thing about October, a little bit of Halloween. So we do look forward to some Halloween parties. I've got a couple of parties that we're going to. On the 18th of October, I'm doing the school disco. So for George, for William's school, I'm doing the school disco for the primary school and George is going to come and help me and we'll do some bits. I don't know what we're going to go dressed as at the moment because, well, I do love a little bit of dress up, as you all know, but I'm not sure exactly what we're going for. We'll think about that. If you've got any ideas, drop me a line. Let me know. Welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Welcome to my home here in beautiful Lime Bay. A huge thank you for joining me once again for a regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at our Halloween home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. I'm Brett, my host for our nighttime podcast. Welcome along to another episode. I've got Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show. If you could follow me, oh, go on, that'd be flipping brilliant. I'd love that. I've also got a supporter page at patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. But it is time now for our well, a little bit of comedy, because, well, we don't we love a little bit of comedy? It's an episode of Steptoe and Son, and we're getting, well, we're definitely getting low on the episode. I think we've only got a few more weeks left of Steptoe and Son, and then I don't really know what we're going to do then, but I think we'll be fine. 22nd of February, 1976, is when this one was first broadcast. It's called Live Now, P-A-Y-E Later. That's, uh, if you're not in the UK, P-A-Y-E is pay as you earn. It's kind of a tax thing, so I'm I'm expecting a taxation episode. Enjoy. We now present another episode in a radio series based on the world famous BBC comedy success, Steptoe and Son. <laughs> With Wilfred Bramble as Albert and Harry H. Corbett as Harold. This week, live now, P-A-Y-E, later. Good afternoon, Father. What's good about it? Oh, there's no doubt about it. You can't beat the joys of living at home. Uh... The cheerful welcome at the gate. The sunny smile of joy as his kindly old face lights up at the pleasure of seeing his son again. (laughs) Oh, the warm glow of the roaring fire in the grate. The delicious smell of the dinner wafted in from the kitchen, disappearing up your router and transporting you into a heady euphoric trance of mouth-watering anticipation. Oh, just like one of the Bisto kids. Mm, mm, mm. What have we got? Tin of sardines. (laughs) Thank you very much, Fanny Steptoe. You said you was making steak and kidney pudding today. Haven't had time. Haven't had time? You had all day. I've been out in the yard all day. Locked in that wardrobe. And pray, what was you doing in that wardrobe? I was woodworming it. And how were you doing that? Crawling down the holes and hitting them over the head with little lemmers? <laughs> Very funny. I bought a tin of that stuff, didn't I? I owe my own money. I was inside painting it on and somebody locked the door. I know who it was. Who? Superworm. <laughs> the king of the woodwork. With one mighty flick of his tail, the door was shut. And clamping his steel like choppers over the key, he spun in the air like a Catherine wheel, hurr, incarcerating his mortal enemy in a living tomb. How would you like a tin of sardines round your ear uh, holes? I oh, know, did it? It was them kids from up the street. I love them. I know the ringleader. He's a nice little boy. He often gives me an hand. Yeah, well, I'll give him one if I catch him. There's only five sardines in the tin, two and a half each. Get that down, you. No. No, I I couldn't. I couldn't eat another mouthful. I'm full up. I had a bag of crisps at lunchtime. Do do you want them or not? No, I don't. And I'll have them then. I shall jump into my outer and go down to the Indian restaurant for a tandoori special. Is uh, that today's post? Mm, Yeah. Uh, Hello? Inland Revenue. Mr. Hay Steptoe. Personal. 
What do they want with you? You ain't paid an income tax for years. You told them you didn't want to join, didn't you? Show us. <laughs> oh, my God. What's the matter? Look. Oh, dear sir, one of our inspectors will be calling on you in regard to a discrepancy in your income tax returns. The query is in respect of the allowances claimed for your wife. We should be grateful if you... What wife? <laughs> I've been claiming for your mother. She's been dead 30 years. I know. I never told them. And you've been claiming for her all this time? Yeah. Well, you say 40 quid a year. First year I put it down by mistake. They never said anything. So I've been putting her down ever since. Harold, what'll they do? Well, for a start, Dad, this is a very serious offence. It's a deliberate fraud. They can fine you up to ten times the amount you fiddled them out of. I haven't got that sort of money. Then it's up to two years inside. Prison? Well, I shouldn't think it'll be a nudist colony. <laughs> Harold, I can't go in the nick. I can't do porridge at my age. I'm too old. I'll never come out. Of course, you could get time off for good behaviour. You might only have to do 18 months. Uh, I can't. I'd never survive it. Oh, you're lucky you're living in this country. And if you was living in Saudi Arabia, they'd chop your ends off. In the Sudan, they'd chop your watsies off. <laughs> or both. Help me, Harold. I'm frightened. There's nothing I can do about it. I didn't fill the form in. <laughs> you can't let them send me into the nick. Why not? Be the first bit of peace and quiet I've had in years. <laughs> That's a terrible thing to say. Well, it's not my fault, is it? You shouldn't try and fiddle them. I'm sorry, Errol. I won't do it again. What am I going to do? Oh, I don't know. I don't... I don't... You could plead insanity. Yeah, that's it. You never accepted your wife's death. You still think she's alive. You still talk to her. You set her place for her at the dinner table. You send her birthday cards. They put me in their nut house. It's up to you. <laughs> 18 months in the nick or the rest of your life in a nut house. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know what to do. When's he coming? This afternoon. What time? Half past four. What time is it now? Half past four. <laughs> Please, don't let them take yeah, me. Oh, 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 don't panic. Now, let's wait and see what he says. Let me do the talking. <laughs> Thank you, Harold. I won't forget it. You get me out of this, and I'll do anything you say. All right, all right, now, keep calm. Just sit down and relax. I'll go and have a word with him. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Greenwood, in Land Revenue. Oh, yes. Y you must be the gentleman they wrote to my father about. That's right. Are your parents in? Uh, well, my father is in. He's waiting for you. And your mother? Well, she's waiting for him to come... That is to say, she's expecting him any time now. I, I, I mean... No, no uh, she's not here. She's sleeping. Would it be inconvenient to wake her up? Well, not so much inconvenient. Uh, difficult. <laughs> you, you see, she's... Yes, well, it doesn't matter. I'm sure your father can answer all the questions I have in mind. Yes. Won't you come in? Look... I think I ought to warn you. He's getting on a bit. Yes. Yeah, you see, his mind isn't what it was. I see. He's a bit vague. Yeah. Eh? You see, yeah. He tends to ramble yeah. a bit, fantasise his things. <laughs> I wouldn't put too much credence on what he says. He's a bit senile. Yes, well, this won't take long. It's quite straightforward. It was the 14-18 war, you know? Yes. He never come out of it the way he went in. Yes. He was intact, physically, except for his teeth. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Here, yeah. yeah. He's Ed. <laughs> He's been a great struggle for us all. Yes, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, did he get a disability pension and he hasn't entered it on his tax return? No, 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 he, he didn't. That was very hard in those days. If you finished up in one piece, that's all they worried about. He's got medals for king and country, it says. A lot of good they did him. Yes, very sad. Yes. You'll find government departments these days are much more humane and understanding. Oh, that is good news. Uh, he's in the lounge. In here. Uh, after you. Thank you. Father, uh, this is Mr Greenwood from the Inland Revenue. Good afternoon, Mr Steptoe. How do you do? Sir? There's no need to salute, Father. <laughs> Stand that. He's dead. Thank you, sir. Ah, oh, oh, oh. uh, Mr Greenwood has one or two questions he would like to ask you. Yes, I'll be as brief as I can. I'm sure we can clear it all up in no time. Please, sit down. No, oh, thank you. May I get you a drink? Oh, thank you. A cup of tea would be nice. A cup of tea? Oh, 
Come now, I mean, something a little stronger in this cold weather. Whiskey, perhaps? Oh, that is kind of you. Soda? Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Your very good health. Oh, good. <coughs> It's what often I can afford the luxury of spirits on my income. Oh, yes. Well, of course. I mean, neither can we. This is, in fact, what's left of a Christmas present from someone in the train. Yes, well, now, let's, uh, let's get straight to the point. Yeah. Oh, uh, excuse me. It's our dinner. Sardines. Is that all? Yes. You only get five in a tin these days. Three up, two down. Oh, well. <laughs> Never mind, Dad. It's Friday tomorrow. Yeah. We'll have a bit of meat. Huh? Cheers. Y oh, yes, cheers. Cheers. Uh, the point in question, Mr. Stepto, is the allowances you have been claiming for your wife. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Cheers. 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 They used to give us this when we was going over the top. Tanked us right up, they did. Oh, Had yeah. to. Mm. We couldn't face it otherwise. All my platoon was wiped out before we got ten yards. Yes, it was shocking. <clears throat> yes, yes. Now, about your wife... Butchers, you... our generals were. The Germans were crying over the machine guns they were as they was wiping us out. Oh, dear me, dear me. No, here, for instance, you have claimed the full marriage allowance and... Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, lions led by donkeys we were. Oh, I never want to go through that again. No, indeed. Let's hope no one ever has to. No, I'll indeed. drink to that, yes. Cheers, 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 cheers. Peace and prosperity to us all. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Peace yes, and prosperity yes. to us yes. all. <clears throat> now, you were married in 1918. Yeah, I come home on leave. I had a blighty wound. I had a piece of shrapnel up my Harris. <laughs> he means at Harris, of a town in France, you know? He's never been the same. <laughs> yes. And you've claimed the marriage allowance ever since. Yes, well, I can explain. I that. used to have blackouts. I didn't know what I was doing. Yes, cheers, well, no, cheers, no, cheers. No, cheers, oh, cheers, 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 cheers. cheers. Now, uh, when was your wife born, Mr. Stoke, uh, Mr. Stipton? 1901. Exactly, 1901. That's what we have here. And so she is now 75 years old. She has been an old age pensioner for ten years. Uh, yeah, well... And yet you have never entered her pension on your income tax returns. That is a very serious omission. Hang on a minute. Cheers! Eh? Oh, yeah, cheers, cheers, cheers. cheers. <laughs> now, now, the law says every source of income must be declared on your returns without exception. That is very remiss of you. Very naughty. I've never drawn a pension. I beg your pardon? Not drawn her pension? No. Oh, dear, dear, oh, dear. We, 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 we can't have that. Oh, well, why, why ever not? It's, it's hard enough for old folk to manage as it is. Mrs. Not, Stepto no. must have her pension. Oh, I shall speak to the Ministry of Health and Social Security. Oh. Yes, you're so proud, you old people. It's oh, so silly. No, 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 please, just a minute. I don't think we ought to involve them. We can manage... Oh, yes, sardines for lunch. Oh, no, 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 no. Your mother is entitled to a pension. The wife of an old soldier. It's disgraceful. My father went through that war. I shall personally see that she gets every penny she's entitled to. I'll see she gets it retro... Retrospectable. Uh, retrogressively. Um, Steptospectably. Uh, uh, retro... Retro... Spec... Spective... Lay. Please, thank you very much. Yes, they have another drink. Yes, of course. <laughs> Good stuff, this. Oh, yes, the mighty Glen Levitt. Yes. <laughs> ten years old. Ten years old, look, sure. Uh, cheers, cheers. Ten cheers. years. Ten years. Pension. Yes, yes, ten years pension. That's what she's due. That's, that, that's, that's, that's hundreds of pounds. How much? Oh, look, let's forget about it. See, we, we live a very simple life. We don't want to cause any trouble. Trouble? No trouble? They can afford it? They'll only spend it on the Concord or some dull bloody thing? <laughs> yes, but, but you see... Not another word. I shall speak to the minister myself. There'll be a man round here first thing in the morning. Mrs. Stepto will just have to sign a form, and that's no, all there is to it. No, look, we don't want it, really. Don't be silly. No, really. Your father has worked and fought for it. Your mother is only getting what she's entitled to. She can use the money to get a decent home. Look at this place. It's lovely. Huh? Old people shouldn't have to live in a place like this. Huh? Homes fit for heroes. Cheers. 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 <laughs> 
Well, you leave everything to me. I shall now bid you good afternoon. Tell Mrs. Stepto not to worry about a thing. Good day, sir. I shall not cease from main to strike. Not a skeleton. Excuse me, then. Oh, shall my thoughts lead in thy hand? Shall we have built a loving as green and pleasant land? <laughs> That's all right, ain't it? Hundreds of pounds, he said. No, it's not all right. Compounding a felony, this is. The bloke's going to come round in the morning expecting Mum to sign a form. We can't get them all drunk, can we? You've had it now, mate. Yeah. You'll just have to make a clean breast of it. I'm not going to jail. They're going to find out anyway, aren't they? If you confess, they might go easier on no, you. No, I'm not going to. Well, that's up to you. There's nothing more I can do. Give us a drink. Yeah, that's it. Go on, get drunk. You might as well, while well, you've got the chance. The only bars that they've got in the place you're going is across the windows, mate. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Yes. Uh, good morning. I'm from the Ministry of Health and Social Security. I'd like to speak to Mrs. Steptoe. Yes. I think you'd better come in. Ah. Look, I think I'd better explain. Is Mrs. Steptoe at home? Look, we, we can't let this go on any longer. I it? quite agree. It's a very lamentable oversight on our part. Never mind, I've got the check for the ten years' arrears. If you wouldn't mind telling Mrs. Steptoe I'm here, we'll just get her to sign the appropriate forms. I'll give her her pensions book, and away she goes. Yeah, where? <laughs> Look, I'm afraid it's not quite, you see. It's a, would you care for a drink? Uh, scotch, gin, vodka? Uh, no, you... thank you. I don't drink. Oh. <laughs> well, in that case, I suppose... Uh, I might as well be perfectly frank with you. You see, my, 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 I'm afraid my mother... Uh, did somebody call me? This is your mother, I take it? It's either her or Ina Sharples. <laughs> <laughs> Don't trip over your bow, mother. Oh, no. Take that fag out from behind your ear. You're setting your wig on fire. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm just going down to the shops, Harold. Uh, what would you like for tea? Oh. You've got company. Mrs. Steptoe? Uh, yes. Mrs. Emily Steptoe? Yes. I am from the Ministry of Health and Social Security. Look, Mother, why don't you go down to the shops and let me sort this out? Sort uh, out There's what? nothing to sort out. I just need Mrs. Steptoe's signature. I shall give her the cheque and pension book and I'll be on my way. Yeah, why don't you mind your own business? Your mother knows what she's doing. And I know what she'll be doing if she gets caught. Uh, pardon? Uh, b b b by my father, that is. Uh, uh, you know he doesn't like you signing things when he's not here. Why don't you go and get him? Uh, no man tells me what to do. I'm a member of the Women's Lib. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, yeah. She was the Germain Greer of her day, weren't you, Mother? Yeah. As you wish. And there you are, if you would sign just there. <sighs> uh, Mother, I wouldn't use father's pen if I was you. Why? Well, you know that he is right-handed, and you are left-handed. You'll spoil the nib. Uh, use my ballpoint. Oh, ta ever so. Emily, Mary, step down. I see you don't wear a wedding ring either. Oh. Women's live again, eh? That's <laughs> uh, fine. And here is your cheque. Blimey, that's more than the Miss World got. And here is your new pension book starting from this week. And long may you live to spend it. Oh, thank you very much. Well, that's it then. I won't bother you any longer. I'm sorry I missed Mr. Steptoe. Goodbye. Oh, come along, oh. Mother. Now, where's your gratitude? Don't just shake hands. I think he deserves a little kiss. Yes. Oh, my <laughs> Look, he's the God, gentlemen. Oh, really? Okay. I'll oh, go on, let her. Go on, let her. <laughs> well, I, I don't know, but... Oh. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye, my dear. Look after yourself. No, it's I'll show you out. <laughs> Very unusual woman, your mother. You don't know how unusual. <laughs> she certainly seems to have something other women haven't. Oh, she has. <laughs> uh, she has. Well, goodbye. Take care of her. Don't worry, I'll take care of her. You've done it now, haven't you? Of all the stupid things to do. What's the matter with you? And take that silly frock hat and wig off. Yeah. You look like old Mother Riley. 
Why did you do it? Because I'm not going to prison. It's a stone bunker you'll go to prison now. You're defrauding them even more. I'm not touching a penny of it. All my pension, I'll put it all in the bank. And they can have it when I die. And then they can't touch me then. How long do you think you'll be able to carry on this ludicrous masquerade? As long as I have to. Shouldn't be difficult. I'll have to dress up once a week and go down to draw me pension. That's all. Corb. Blimey, this knicker elastic don't half cut into your legs. <laughs> knicker elastic? Here. You haven't gone funny, have you? Eh? <laughs> what are you wearing them knicker things for? Oh, I'm not going upstairs on the bus without them, mate, I'm telling you. <laughs> you won't get away with it, you know. One day you'll forget to put them on. The conductor will catch you and you'll both end up inside. <laughs> Excuse me, is this the old age pension queue? That's right, love. Here you are, you can get in front of me. Are you uh, on your own, dearie? Are you asking for a clout around the ear hole? Oh, that's what I like, a bit of spirit. What's your name, love? Mind your own business. Oh, it's on your pension book. Emily. Oh, that's a nice name. It suits you. I'm Norman. How do you do? Ooh. If you pinch my bum again, Mush, I'll, I'll... You'll what? I'll call a policeman. I am a policeman. Oh. At least I was. So I'm retired. <laughs> well, it's been very nice. I'd better go. Oh, no, no. You haven't drawn your money yet. There's only two in front of you. You won't be long. Yes, I was a sergeant in the fraud squad. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> yes, you'd be surprised at the swindles people get up to. Not much cop past me, though. I can spot phonies a mile away. I always know when they're on the fiddle. Uh, next, please. Ah, oh, that's you, pussycat. Give him your book. Oh. <laughs> yes, relentless I was. Never gave up. Once I got my teeth into a case, that was it. I always got them in the end. So there we are, Mrs. Stepter. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be all set. Uh, not so fast. I want a word with you. What do you want? What are you doing this afternoon? I? Fancy coming to the pictures? I can't. I've got to get me son's dinner ready. We can get in for a bob each. My treat. If you're nice, I might even buy you a hot dog. I can't. Oh, it's a good program. What are you doing after the orgy? Pardon? Well, that's the title. And wife swapping, French style. Um, <laughs> no, no, I don't like them sort of films. Uh, I'm not that sort of girl. Now, if you'll excuse me. Oh, no, you don't. You're not getting away as easy as that, my little sweetheart. And then, off to the pictures, I'll take you down the fish shop and buy you some supper. And then we'll go dancing down the Derby and Junk Club. And after that, hey, <laughs> well, that'll be a little surprise. Yeah, it will be for you, too. <laughs> You own tonight. Oh, mommy plates. After the dancing is through. Oh, do you come here often? <laughs> going to hold you tight oh. and whisper, I love you. I do. Who's leading? <laughs> Who's the lucky boy? That's going one, your two, three, way one, two, three, to kiss you good night. Hey? Oh, come back, Emily! Come back! Good night. <laughs> oh, Harold, thank God! Lock the front door. Where the hell have you? Good. Then it was happened to you. Has somebody tried to have a go? Yeah. <laughs> Where have you been all day? Uh, with a dirty old ex-copper. He fancies me. An ex-copper? Yeah. Oh. Well, you could do worse, Mother. It's no joke. I think he wants to marry me. Well, I'm not surprised. You're a very attractive woman. Oh, <laughs> cobblers. <laughs> Fraud squad, he said. He's got more arms than an octopus. If I go out with him again, it's only a matter of time before he finds out. 
Uh, what am I going to do, Harold? I'll tell you what you are going to do. First of all, you're not going to wait till you're dead. You're going to send all that money back now. Eh? Anonymously. Uh, what about my pension? Uh, that's got to be drawn every week. Not if you do what I say. Now, write the following. Uh, dear sir, yeah. it is with great regret <sighs> that I have to inform you that you... There's a letter for you from the Inland Revenue. Oh, give us it. What does it say? Dear Mr Steptoe, I was very sad indeed to hear of the tragic death of your wife. See, it worked. You're in the clear. There's more. Show us. However, before we close her file, there is the question of death duties to clear up. I assume she will have left her estate to be shared between you and your son and your daughter. In which case it will be... What daughter? <laughs> Muriel. Who's Muriel? My daughter. The one I've been claiming for. <laughs> She's 35. You can't claim for a daughter of 35. She works for me. She's my secretary. I pay her 15 quid a week. Oh, God, I give up, I give up. I guess you're out of one hole and you'll get yourself a dig another one. He says it's only a formality. He'll just want a signature. He says to save time, he'll come round and see to it personally. Harold? What? Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 not me, no. No, no, it'll only be the ones. I'll give you the sack tomorrow. No, under no circumstances. I will not do it. I'm not interested. This time, you can't go to the nick. Mr Greenwood. Good afternoon. How nice to see you again. Come in. Thank you. I'm so sorry about your dear wife. Oh, yes. Great shock to us all. She didn't suffer. Oh, good, good. And this won't take long. Would you like a drink? Yes. No, no, no. Perhaps I'd better. I don't think I'd better. I'll just get your three signatures and I'll be off. Well, uh, Harold's out on the round, but Muriel's here. I'll call her. Muriel! Yes, children can be very comforting for a man at a time like this. Ah, oh, yes. She's a good girl. You called, Father? <laughs> This is Mr. Greenwood from the Inland Revenue. Pull your stockings up, dear. Oh, thank you, Father. Cold. My dear Miss Steptoe, what? allow me to offer my condolences. I feel as if I knew your mother personally. <laughs> it was a great shock. Oh, poor, poor Mummy. There, 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 there. there, 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 there. <laughs> Courage, my dear, don't give way. This won't take long. Just your signature. My presence here is an intrusion on your grief, I realise that. But if I may be permitted to suggest a little sympathetic company is the best medicine after a suitable period of mourning. What are you trying what to... What I am trying to say is that I would be honoured if I were to be permitted to call upon you socially at a more propitious time. Yeah, now, wait a minute. You Get look you... lovely in black. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll leave you two together. I'll just pop out and see what's happened to Harold. Dad, you stay here. There must be some gypsy in your family. No, Dad! No, do you mind? You let out my hand. Such delicate little fingers. Strong but delicate. Oh, am I hurting you? Oh, I love you. <laughs> You've been listening to Wilfred Bramble and Harry H. Corbett as Steptoe and Son, with Edward Kelsey as Mr. Greenwood and Michael Shannon and Peter Williams. This program was written and adapted for radio by Ray Galton and Alan Simpson and produced by Bobby J. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our latest episode of Steptoe and Son and we'll be back tomorrow with yours truly, Johnny Dollar, going live from 5pm on UK time. I've got written in front of me GMT, but I'm trying not to say GMT. I'll be able to say it again once British summertime has come to an end, which I'm guessing will be... Well, pretty soon, won't it? As I mentioned earlier, I've got a supporter page at patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. And if you've got any ideas for a sponsor for the big show, well, drop us a line and let us know. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow. Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye.